uh, Gormaigot, and just want to say uh, thank you um, uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Deputy Nocton, for, for allowing me some of your time. Um, I just want to thank all the, the deputies for their contributions. There's been a, a, a very good engagement here. Uh, and I know the law is going to be some areas of difference, but I think it's fair to say there's been a broad welcome uh, from all sides of the House for the measures in the bill. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can never do everything we want to do in a single budget. Uh, there will always be more asks and there will always be more things we would like to do. Uh, but I think we have uh, struck a, a fair balance here. Um, and all of the analysis show that the budget is uh, a positive budget, particularly for the most vulnerable. And I think, uh, you know, the ERSI has said that the weekly uh, welfare um, increases um, together uh, with the one-off measures will mean that low-income households will be better off next year than they would if we had just increased welfare rates in line with inflation. Uh, and I know there's another report out this morning uh, from the Irish Fiscal Advisory Council, and uh, they say that the government has got the balance right between protecting vulnerable households and uh, avoiding adding to inflation. So I think any fair-minded person um, will say that we have, have got, we've got a, a, you know, a lot right in the budget and I'd love to do more and there's no doubt about that. There's loads of things we'd all love to do but we can't do it all. At, you know, we, we just have to, to try and do these things incrementally and we have made some, uh, some uh, very important uh, changes. Now, many deputies have uh, brought up the Community Welfare Service, uh, and can I just say that the delivery of this crucial service is a priority for me and for my department, so I'll use this opportunity to give the House an update. Where people have an urgent need, we want to make sure they can get support, and that's why we had a major communications campaign to raise awareness of the additional needs payment. That campaign has worked. We know that because the numbers applying for and receiving the payments is up, as of October 2022, over 75,000 applications for additional need payments were processed and awarded. And this represents a 63% increase in awarded applications compared to the same period in 2021. We have already paid an estimated €46 million Euro in additional need, needs payments so far this year. And it's important to say that some of this increase can be attributed to the response to support families arriving from Ukraine. Generally speaking, where it is clear that a person has an immediate need, every effort is made to ensure that they receive a payment on the same day. And in fairness, we all deal with community welfare officers through our constituency office where the CWO recognises there is a clear and urgent need. They are normally very good at making sure that person is looked after and they receive the payment as quickly as possible. Where an application is complete and the required document documentation is supplied, I have to say it is processed quickly. Where there are delays, it is generally due to additional information or documentation being requested from the person to support their application. And my department has taken a number of steps to simplify and streamline the process for persons applying for additional needs payments. There's been a major public, as I said, information campaign throughout the year to raise awareness of the payment. We know a lot of people have never been to a CWO before, uh, so that's why we established a new national helpline phone number so people can ring up and get advice. There's also a full-time uh, community welfare officer presence in all 50 intrio offices nationwide, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. In addition, CWOs remain available to attend clinics. They can talk to people over the phone uh, and, where needed, they can also arrange a house visit by appointment. So we're genuinely doing everything we can to facilitate and help people. And just in terms of staffing levels, there are 412 people across all grades in the Community Welfare Office. In light of the increased level of applications as part of the budget, we secured agreement for approximately 74 additional staff to be assigned in the Community Welfare Office. Recruitment has commenced for these additional staff and it's anticipated the additional staff will be in place by quarter one of 2023. But in the interim, uh, we, uh, until these staff have been recruited, 30 social welfare inspectors have been temporarily reassigned to the Community Welfare Service since the start of November to assist with claim processing. While we don't have a full picture until the end of the year, what we're actually starting to see now is that there has been a fall off in applications for additional needs payments over the last few weeks. And this can probably be attributed to the various lump sum payments 
uh, which have been paid out in recent weeks, which have helped to reduce the financial pressure that many people are facing. So if deputies have examples uh, of delays, uh, I would ask that they pass them on to me or to my department, and I give a commitment here that I will look at those specific uh, instances that, uh, that you bring to my attention. And uh, I know that um, it was raised here also uh, that, about the national wage, minimum wage, and just to say that it would not neg negatively affect a full-time worker from a PRSI point of view. And then some said about there's nothing in the budget for lone parents. That's completely wrong. Point out that the budget for 2023 notes that lone parents uh, households stand to benefit from a 1,872 annual increase in support. In the ESRI switch analysis in terms of household types, lone parents and single retired people benefit the most in proportional terms from social welfare budget 2023 measures. Recipients of one parent family payment and job seeker transitional payment received a double weekly payment in October and uh, they will also receive a Christmas bonus double payment in December. And like all families with children, lone parents receive a double child payment of um, child benefit on the 1st of November. Uh, they received that already. Lone parents in receipt of the fuel allowance also received a lump sum payment of 400 in November. And uh, perhaps uh, just to say that uh, uh, half of the payments of the 500 euro cost of living lump sum payment made to recipients of the working family payment in November, that actually went to loan parents. So there's a lot of loan parents on the working family payment and they're able to benefit from the 500 euro lump sum. Budget 2023 also provided for a 40 euro increase in the weekly income threshold for the working family payment and the personal rate of working age payments such as one parent family payment will increase by 12 euros from 208 to 220 per week, also from January. And uh, as I announced last week, I intend to bring forward legislation as soon as possible to disregard child maintenance payments from the social welfare means test. And again, that will be a big help to lone parents. And then uh, some, one, another deputy said that worker families get nothing. I think that's a soundbite. It's not true. Uh, there's a very comprehensive ta tax package to support working families, and they'll benefit from the university, universal uh, energy credits of 600, and working families will benefit from the reduction in childcare costs. In terms of my department, all families will benefit from the double child benefit payment. In addition, low-income working families will also benefit from the 500 euro lump sum and the expansion of the working family payment. And just to say that... Um, Recipients, uh, it was actually Deputy Joe Flaherty raised the issue of recipients of disablement benefit not re receiving fuel allowance. I'm pleased to say that both disablement benefit and half rate carers allowance will be disregarded from the means test for fuel allowance. And I want to acknowledge the Joint Oireachtas Committee who, jo who suggested this change. And uh, I, I, you know, I was heartened to hear the widespread support from all the deputies for the new over 70s fuel allowance scheme. Uh, and I think that that would kick in on the 1st of January. And I know everybody wanted it today or yesterday or the day of the budget, but we do have to, uh, we do have to make sure that the IT systems work. And we have to make sure when we put this stuff through that uh, we do so in a way that's safe and it gets to the people that it's meant to get Thank to. You, and because if I made a mistake with the IT system, I'd be in bigger trouble here today. Uh, but so, okay. please God, it won't happen. We were lucky we didn't have any. If I let you go, then any thanks longer, very much. Longer, I'll be in trouble.